can make a YouTube video, Blue. We'll call it we'll call it Blue Tube. Does that sound good? I think someone already took Red Tube. I don't know. Hey everybody, it's Mike with Monkey Fab. How are you guys doing? Uh, I'm gonna continue today. I got no light. I got light on. Hey, GLS Fab product placement on our how to TIG weld uh, for beginners. Quick, dirty stuff. Um, I got a couple things coming that I'm pretty excited about. It's been crazy busy. I'm trying to get the old hoopty, my old LS turbo swapped hoopty up and running and along with the normal grind of just trying to do the day-to-day -day business that comes in the door and then all the phone calls I get and it's like if you're in Houston and you're into cars you know about uh, the Texas 2K and this is like the one time a year where everybody just freaks out completely and uh, wants to call you and need something like yesterday because they like to wait to get the cars running until like the day of the race I think is kind of how it's supposed to work um, but anyway today we're going to learn how to sharpen tungstens and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about tungstens so uh, I'm happy Real quick, I'm happy to pick up uh, Blue, Di Blue Diamond, uh, Blue Diamond, I keep saying that, Blue Demon Welding Supplies as uh, a product on the website on monkeyfabgarage.com. Um, doing something, uh, you know, I've been doing this uh, how to weld thing and I thought, man, it would be nice if somebody would just throw together something where somebody can go and just buy everything they need. Because, you know, I have my complement of all my TIG fillers that I told you about. I have the, uh, the stainless steel, the mild steel, the aluminum and the 309. I got the 308. I have uh, ER70 S2 and 5356. Um, but what I did on my website is I went ahead and I, I packaged all that along with uh, two thoriated tungstens, two 2% uh, lanthanated tungstens, so you can do aluminum and steel. And uh, that's all packaged on my website. So if you just go under uh, TIG welders, as in, as in possessive, uh, uh, TIG welders starter kit you can pick uh, you can go cheap as cheap as I think like $36 for just like the thin sets you get like one uh, the 308 one of the ER 70 s2 for mild steel one for stainless steel and one for aluminum the 1 16th or the next size up which you get like one of each uh, of those or the deluxe where you get everything in the 309 and the next one up I you get uh, I have like the ultimate kit which gets you a stubby gas lens um, and that goes into a large gas tub. I, I did that because I figure most people that are beginning are going to have a number 17 air-cooled torch. It's just what everything comes with. So you get that with uh, a GLS Fab Cup. Uh, you can get the uh, number 12s, which are great, great gas covers. Saves a lot of gas. Or the um, number 16s. And the cool thing about these... Whoop! I just broke, busted my tungsten. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go as expected, so I shouldn't have so much stick out. But anyway, the cool thing is you can drop them, and they don't break. See that? They don't break. They don't. They just don't. They don't break like other cups do, which is great, especially beginning uh, to learn how to TIG weld because you're going to drop your shit all the time. I still, I, I've been doing it for like, I don't know, three years or something like that, and I still drop my shit all the time. But we want to talk about tungsten today. That's great. We can just take that one that we bust on accident, and I'll show you how to sharpen it because this is how they come. They come basically flat. Um, let's take this guy out. And see, I'm always dropping shit. That's why I got these cups and I love them. Uh, and this is kind of how they come. You can see that? They come flat. And that's kind of a trick with tungsten. It's so brittle. You can, what they can tell you, to, what some people say to do is just, if you get a bunch of metal on it, you can just smack it on the end with a hammer. Um, and that, and it will it'll just pop right, light. it'll just pop right off. Uh, the bad thing about that is that it, it sometimes creates like little fissures in the metal and then the arc doesn't do well. So the, the smart thing to do is to do what I'm going to show you and just, uh, and just um, sharpen it. So uh, there's a million different ways to sharpen tungsten. The thing you have to remember is that it's like crazy hard. So, um, so what I like to do is I chuck it up in a drill uh, and I have lots of drills, but let's just use old trusty uh, Milwaukee fuel product placement. I know of people that have sponsorship by Milwaukee and boy if I had more than 500 followers on my YouTube channel I sure would like to have that sponsorship. But you'll see what I'm doing here. I should probably put you guys in a tripod huh? I'd be more professional. Oh, come on. Can you see that? Okay. And 
stick that in there, and chuck it up. So now it's bam, and I can spin it around and sharpen it. So um, I think the the best way to do is with the tungsten sharpener, and that is. Uh, something I have, it's, it, but it, it can be expensive. I'll show you what I got. Um, actually, I, I got this from a friend, so I didn't really pay for it. But I did buy the um, the Milwaukee. I'm a Milwaukee whore. So I bought this Milwaukee uh, Dremel, basically, and attached the head. The head is from Arc Zone, um, and they're a good place to get stuff from. But I want to say, like, this particular one is, like, three or 400 bucks. Uh, and then you're supposed to use their special uh, diamond... Uh, diamond wheels which were like 35 bucks each um, you can fit the ones from Harbor Freight uh, these little guys in there and they work pretty good uh, it's not really that machine isn't really designed for that but I don't see why anybody couldn't put that on a Dremel and just kind of basically do the same thing but just do it by hand I'm gonna have to put you on a tripod because I'm gonna have to use both my hand. So I think it just depends on what you have at your house. I think everybody has a grinder, and this is how I started sharpening mine was with a grinder. And uh, what you do is you just turn it on, and you just want to have your tungsten in line. Can you see me? So I turn it on, and I just have my tungsten in line, and this way. What you don't want to do is this. No matter what media you're using uh, to sharpen it, you don't want your scratches going. Uh, perpendicular to you want it going parallel with the length of the tungsten so I wouldn't sharpen it like this I would sharpen it like this another way you could do is with a speed grinder this is um, real common I think everybody's got one of those in a flat disc and I recommend you know check out that ceramic braces but uh, or belt sander so my in my my tiers of how I likes to sharpen how I likes to sharpen the tungsten is my diamond wheel, my tungsten sharpener. Uh, but I only use that if I hadn't like got a bunch of big goopy boogers on the tungsten. Now, if I get a big, you know, I'm, I'm feeding my filler wire, and instead of instead of feeding it to the metal, I, I feed it onto my tungsten, and I have like this big, you know, glob of uh, you know metal on the end of my tungsten, then I'm going to go to my belt sander and we'll chuck it up just like this and we'll turn the belt sander on and we'll sharpen it. Uh, and then I would go to a dedicated, a dedicated um, grinder. They got like these really small ones at Harbor Freight that are like real small, but the, the wheels don't really last very long. So, I'm, but, but I think if you bought like a good aftermarket wheel instead of Harbor Freight wheels, um, some of the stuff I noticed at Harbor uh, just something to know if you're going to use one of these because it's going to eat these guys up quick. And uh, my wheel is nice and smooth and it's the shape I want it, so I'm not going to demo too much of that. I'm going to show you the belt sander method. It'll also work on a uh, sanding disc. So if you have like uh, one of those 12 inch or uh, 10 inch sanding wheels, uh, sanding disc, you can also do it on there. But let me show you how I do it. I'll do a little bit on each. That way you can kind of see what it looks like on each of them seem like it makes sense. So again, this is uh, ceramic. It is 36 grit and it is from Combat Abrasives and they make good products. I order all my abrasives pretty much from them Benchmark. notice is number one is I don't mill it I just barely touch it I just want it to barely turn because if you go too fast and it kind of it, it does some funny stuff um, so don't go too fast just pick a nice kind of not that that okay or you can go to lower lower speed if your drill has that option you'll also see I keep it moving around. What will happen if I keep it in one position, tungsten is so hard, it'll eat right through a belt. I mean, it'll, it'll chew up a belt, a grinding wheel, whatever it is. So I move it around a little bit, and I'm keeping it in line with this. So I'm not, again, not doing this. I'm doing this, and I'm at a 45 degree, because I like my tips to be 45 degrees when I'm done. 
So that's how I do it on the belt sander. I'll do it real quick so you can just, just take a look at all the things I'm doing to get it. I was gonna do it on the disc sander. I got one of these, I, I got several of these guys, but I like this one with the dead man switch. That's if something goes horribly wrong, it, it stops. So it's basically just the same thing. I'm just kind of using my body as a pivot point and just, you know, holding this guy right here. And, and uh, you know, I, I got safety glasses on. I'm doing the least responsible thing. And lastly, with the grinder, it's the same thing. You guys see this? Switch over here. So I'm gonna rip you off of here right now. All right, so let's see if I can zoom this in. So that's it right there. And then the opposite side is that's what the that's what my diamond wheel puts on it. So you see it's kind of smooth. It's a lot smoother. Um, and I got this guy at a little bit a little bit blunter of an angle than I'd usually go with, but I wouldn't be afraid to. I, I prefer this to the really you know exaggerated kind of like pencil shape. I don't like this. I think it spreads the art too wide. For personally, I like it to be pinpointed. So basically what you'll get is um, on your tungsten is, let's see, do this and we'll do this. So basically this guy here is going to have basically a tighter band than this guy here tends to be wider in general. So that's everything I've seen and that's hold true is the is the steeper of an angle you put on the tungsten tip the wider it's going to kind of be and the same thing with uh, the narrower so the, the more blunter you I'm sorry the blunter you would have the more narrow the uh, the puddle the arc would be in, in its width so and lastly um, why I think this is pretty good the one thing I would do differently is if if I was going to weld on uh, aluminum with this, and I wouldn't because this is thoriated. So use the lanthanated to weld on uh, aluminum and use the thoriated for steel or use a lanthanated for both. It really doesn't make a difference. Do be aware that the lanthanated has, um, or not the lanthanated, getting everything all backwards. Why? I don't know. The thoriated, the 2% thoriated, is supposed to be radioactive or something, so it'll eventually kill you and give you cancer. But I think everything you do in welding is going to kill you and give you cancer. So there's an old saying that says there's no such thing as an old welder. Um, so anyway, for doing for preparing these guys for uh, aluminum, I just knock the tip off. And that's what I do um, when I'm welding aluminum. I just... <laughs> Thank you.
So that's it. Um, just take the very tip off for the, for the simple fact that welding aluminum pulls a lot of heat into the tungsten and it, it has a tendency to, if it's really thin, it's going to want to kind of heat up and drop into the aluminum and then you got to stop and clean the tungsten out of it, uh, which is a big pain in the ass and it's usually ugly and, and all that stuff that's associated with it. But that's how you sharpen a tungsten, uh, some quick ways to do it, some effective ways to do it, how to do it, and then what tungsten to use with which. And the next time I drop a video on welding, we're going to be actually welding metals. So we'll probably start with steel. My wife's going to help me out. She's learning. So it'll be good for you to see what another learner does. I'll just videotape her welding. So that'll be easy. But uh, thanks for stopping by. Checking out uh, the series, checking out my, my uh, YouTube video, uh, my YouTube channel, Monkey Fab. I appreciate you guys checking it out. Uh, be sure to go to my website and take a look around if you don't, if you're uh, into uh, welding or turbo cars and stuff like that. It's MonkeyFabGarage.com. Thanks for uh, dropping by. Mike signing out. So I went ahead and dropped the link in the uh, description section of the video to the TIG welder starter kits. So you can go in there, just uh, read through the description, it'll show you everything that's available. I mean, it basically goes from $36 to $136, depending on what all you want to get in the kit, but it saves you uh, quite a bit of money for getting them in bulk, and then it all ships in one medium flat rate box, so you don't get killed on the shipping either. So I think it's a pretty good deal. Uh, I'm happy to offer that to you guys. So uh, if you're interested in that, then just drop down into the uh, description and click the link, and it'll take you right Right to it. Thanks for dropping by and checking out the video.